That's right. There's nothing, say nothing, that our God can't do. That's right there. We could just go home on that, right? There's nothing that our God can't do. But I've got a lot more for you, so you're going to be so glad you're here. So turn to someone and say, Happy Day 16. Day 16, I'm actually kind of getting sad. When it's over, you know, I'm glad uh, my body's got to get to sleep a little bit, but I'm kind of like, oh, you know, but it's really not over. The gathering might come to an end early in the morning, but obviously we just continue to pray uh, and find your quiet place in your home or wherever it is and, and meet with God. But hopefully this time of prayer and fasting sharpens your sword, you know, so the word of God is the sword, you know, and so it sharpens it. So you go away, uh, just studied up and drawn closer to God. And so it, you will feel more powerful, uh, because your sword is sharper. And so today I have three weapons for you about the blood of Jesus, the power in the blood. And so last night I knew it was what God was telling me to say, uh, and um, so I just got the old tried and true Bible that that came through for me a long, long time ago. And I was like, Jesus, seriously, bled early in the morning? That's a lot. That's a lot, God. And so I just opened it. It fell open to the scripture about the blood of Jesus. I was like, okay, I hear you, and I will obey. Uh, so this is this morning. It'll help sharpen your weapon and give you three things that will as you pray and as you fight this fight of faith, you'll have some ground to stand on. And so uh, I was thinking, though, before uh, I went on uh, this journey of these scriptures, uh, I, you know, I grew up in that tiny little town. That uh, tiny little church had like maybe 60 people in it. Well, at one point, um, we got a new worship leader. And so, you know, that worship leader, that means a lot. So he was just a little stout man, and first nobody liked him, and then everybody loved him. Uh, but we would just open the hymns and sing, and the woman would sit there and do her hand like this, and she was always mad. I was always like, why are you so mad? This is good news. And uh, so he came in and kind of changed everything, and we would always sing the song, uh, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. Did anybody grow up singing that song? Oh, it's a good one. So we would just sing the song, What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You know, you go on the next the verse, you go on the next verse, you go on the next verse. We'd sing it and we'd shut the hymn on and sit down. Well, he had a better idea. He got the choir full of people. And... The whole time, the congregation of 50, 60 people were singing. The choir was just going, nothing but the blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And I mean, I was like 15. I was like, darn, I have never been to Broadway, but this is not bad. Oh, man, he just changed everything. But more than anything, he got that stuck in my mind. Nothing but the blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And so today we're going to learn about the blood of Jesus a little bit. There's so much in the Bible about the blood of Jesus, about the price that was paid for us to be free. And so we make a lot of it. And if you don't understand it, I hope by the end of today that you will. Uh, so here are three things. The first one is it, the, the blood of Jesus redeems us. We are to remind our enemy that the price was paid and we are redeemed. Redeemed means you're brought back. You were paid for your purchase by something and you're brought back to who you were created to be. Uh, one day someone was talking, they brought their spouse and they were trying to get them, you know, to accept Jesus and all these things. And they said, well, his whole family said, and she's trying to change you. I said, oh, no, 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 no. The world and the devils change you. God wants to bring you back who you really are. 
but there is a fight for that. And so we need to know that it's the blood of Jesus. We're redeemed, we're purchased. And in Hebrews 9, uh, verses 22, it says, In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood, and without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness. But this is the scripture that we all stand on so many times, Revelations 12, 11. And they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives unto death. So they overcame with the blood. The blood establishes an un unassailable. Unassailable means able, unable to attack, question, or defeat. The blood comes against all those weapons and those words the devil uses at you. He, the bond with God, he cannot break when the accuser comes at you when you plead the blood of Jesus. And you know, to plead something, if you go before the case, if you go before heaven, or if you go before any judge and you start pleading your case, you're pleading it to the judge. But in this situation, you're pleading it to the accuser. You're pleading it to someone. And so when you go before the judge, it's just like, it's already there. You're pleading it with emotional words. That's what, to plead your case. But you're not really pleading it to the judge because God is saying, I agree with you, but you gotta tell your accuser you have no right. By the blood of Jesus, I have already been bought. It says it right here in the word of God. So it does redeem us. The primary weapon is the blood of Jesus. And it causes us to prevail over the enemy's accusations. I remember the story of someone one time, they, they had lived a wild life, just wild, and ended up in prison for a few years, and they got wonderfully saved in prison. And he said no more than he got saved that he started hearing the voice, you're not saved. Look how bad you were. This is, this is, no, not. He said, I never heard that before I got saved. He goes, I was just living wild, running fast as I could. But he says, as soon as I got saved. So the devil accuses the children of God. Now, if you grew up in church and you went out and were wild, you are going to have a little bit of natural, your mama put it in your brain, you're doing the wrong thing, which is a good thing. But you really start this fight of faith once you get saved. Oh, you're not good enough. You'll never make it. You're not quite as good as them. You will hear that continually. And it's not necessarily in your brain. It's the accuser coming against you to stop you, to freeze you. And the only thing that can stop him is the blood of Jesus. So you might have heard the old timers go, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus over my kids all the time. They don't know it. As I go to bed, I plead the blood of Jesus over every one of their minds. Because that's where the warfare is. And so you, the world will not understand what we're doing, but they never will. But the blood of Jesus is a weapon that we have and it redeems us. And we need to remind the devil that we're redeemed. The second thing, it restores us. I've stood on this scripture so many times. First Peter 2, 24. First Peter 2, 24. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes we are healed. That is not debatable. We are healed. We are healed. By whose stripes we are healed. I say it all the time, as many times as I get an opportunity, because the Lord brought it to my understanding years ago that I didn't like those movies where they tortured somebody. I'm like, just shoot them, get it over with. This is a really, you can tell I was raised with a bunch of brothers. But I didn't like that. And I was just like, why do they do that to people? They do that because they want them to give up something. God was headed to the cross. He was gonna give his life and come out of the tomb. But the devil didn't want him to us to have anything that he wanted for us. So he put stripes on his back and tortured him so we would give up our healing. And no, he did not. He took stripes on his back for our healing. When they're torturing somebody in a prison, in a, in a captive place, they're wanting to give up secrets. And Jesus did not give it up. He took stripes on your back for his healing. He was stood, he was a good and faithful soldier of the most high king. He took it so we could be healed in every part of our life, physically, mentally, emotionally. If you're rattled in your emotions, receive God's healing. Receive it by his stripes, you are healed. And Isaiah, Peter is quoting Isaiah 
53 verses 5 it said but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement for our peace was upon him so we can have peace we don't have to be rattled like the world he took stripes for us to have peace our mind our emotion and our bodies can be healed our transgressions the actual act of a sin it says that he was bruised he was wounded for our transgressions when you willfully sin he's already paid for it iniquities a deep rooted sin he's already paid for that his blood and his bruises restores us on the inside and out first john uh, chapter one verse says but verse 7 but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all our sins we're restored in every part of our body and when the accuser comes at you if you can't remember all these scriptures which you really need to write them down because you're in a war there's a fight for your faith it starts in your mind it gets down to your emotions and it actually sometimes attacks your body you need to plead the blood of Jesus plead these scriptures over it and the last thing that the blood of Jesus this weapon that we're learning today it reminds us it reminds us we gather on first Wednesdays and that's when we take communion we have to continually be reminded of the price that was paid for our freedom and for our healing and Matthew 26, verse 27 and 28 says, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which sends a covenant between God and his people. It is poured out to forgive the sins of many. So when we take communion, we always are reminded that we were bought with blood and by his stripes that we are healed. We receive it and we fight with the blood of Jesus. We present our case as it were, to the enemy, the accuser, that this is, this is, the fight is over, it's already won. I wanna remind you of the blood of Jesus. You have to remind the accuser in your brain of the blood of Jesus. Pleading the blood of Jesus is not begging God to do something. It is not a statement of unbelief or fear. Pleading the blood activates what's happened through the blood of Jesus on the cross. Is accepting God's, is asking God to provide what Jesus' blood has already purchased. It's a statement of faith about what happened on Calvary. So when we take communion, we're just being reminded, oh yeah, oh yeah, it's, we've already been paid for. The blood bought it. I love this song right now that we're singing and it has a little bit of the old fashioned one in it. Uh, nothing but the blood, but it says, Satan and his plans will go over me. Remember when they were about to leave Egypt, he said, put the blood on the doorpost and that, that spirit of death went over them. When you plead the blood of Jesus over yourself, it's very powerful. You're acknowledging the price that was paid and plead the blood of Jesus over your children. People say, I don't know if that works. Well, you know what? It works. I've seen it work. I've seen my children be let loose of the grip of Satan. I've seen healing happen in our house. It's all because of the blood of Jesus. It's a powerful thing. Let me pray for you before we stand and pray. And you know, we can walk around, you can pray out loud, you can take communion, but I hope these uh, weapons will help you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the people that you sent us. I thank you, Lord, for the price that was paid. I do plead the blood of Jesus over our people, over their homes and their children and their grandchildren. I plead the blood of Jesus over this house. This is a house of prayer and we want any accusations to be backed up in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God that we stand on. We thank you for the authority that you've given us. We pray this all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. There's no power like the mighty name of Jesus. And there's no weapon like the word of God. So as we pray today, I, I kind of just want to remind us of our, if you grew up in church, just our old, some of our old roots, you know. I hated that I saw two wrecks up there. It was severe wrecks, it sounded like, that they were asking for a prayer. You know, my grandma used to get in the car and say, Lord, give us traveling mercies. Plead the blood of Jesus over this car. Then all of a sudden, the church got too cool to use the weapons of God. The world will not understand, but we still need to apply it. 
the blood of Jesus to our houses and our homes, our cars and our children. We still to make this a daily thing. And if you're woken up at night and your devil's harassing you, you remind him that he's already lost the ground in our house. So you're not pleading your case to the judge. The judge already says you're set free, but you do have an enemy. And he says, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. But by the blood of Jesus, we'll make it in. But don't take those accusations from the devil that just beats you up and makes you... He really wants to stop you here on earth at declaring the works of God. So pray with me today. Lift whatever's on your heart to Him. and Pray with power. Pray with authority. Pray with the right, the legal right that you've been purchased with. And see heaven change your home. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, as we gather here. Our Father. What a wonderful phrase. Our Father is our Father, and you're a good Father. You're so good that you sent your only Son to earth, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that you left out of heaven, willing to help us, knowing that we could not make it without you. God, what a beautiful picture of sacrificial love. We thank you, God, for spilling your blood. Lord, the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, has set us free from all the accusations that are coming against us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the blood on the doorpost, Lord. In Exodus 12, it says, bring him into your house, Lord, and you will be spared of the wickedness that's going to go over. Lord, it still applies, Jesus, in Acts 16. It says, you and your household will be saved by the blood of Jesus. So Old Testament and New Testament. And still this day, the power in the blood of Jesus is very powerful, God. It works its way and the world will not understand it. But Lord, we understand it. So we apply the blood of Jesus to our homes, Lord. We bring our children in. It's us and our household, God. Whatever's under our roof is under the blood. We thank you, Jesus, for that. We will not go back and forth saying, oh, will this be said? Yes, the prodigal will come home because it is our right in the name of Jesus. We don't know when, but we know it is our right through the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you made room for us in our household, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over our people and over this house. We plead the blood of Jesus over the house of the Lord. There will be no confusion, no sickness, no disturbing, no Satan stealing anything, Lord. I apply the blood of Jesus over the homes in this church, over the hearts, Lord, over the tormented minds, God. We put it to rest in Jesus' name. You are saved. You are bought with the most precious price, the blood of Jesus. So we come against that, Lord. We come against these accusations that want to rattle these emotions of our people. Lord, it's settled at the cross. It was settled at the cross. The blood of Jesus was paid and he came walking out of that tomb. He's alive and well and his scripture is alive. It is the spirit that we use to fight the weapons that are brought against us, Lord. The accusations that are walking, come against us. We prevail with the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you've redeemed us. We're saved by the blood of Jesus. We thank you, God. We could not save ourselves, but you saved us. Lord, we thank you that you've restored us. We thank you, Lord, that you took our sickness on your back. We thank you, Jesus, for the peace in that. We thank you that you care so much about us, Lord, that you did that. We thank you, Jesus, that we're reminded in your word over and over again that it is by the blood of Jesus that we're set free. God, we want to put it in practice. We want to thank you for it. Holy is the lamb that was slain. We thank you, Lord, that we're believers. We thank you, Jesus, that we have a right to the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we'll go out sharper and Lord, we'll go out strong knowing that what is for us. If God be for us, who can be against us? So God, we thank you for this gathering. We pray that you would help us, Lord. And we'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Practice what you've learned. Apply what you've learned. Apply the blood of Jesus over your homes, your cars. We know that it's a powerful thing that the world can understand, but it is a weapon that will help us win here on earth. Thank you for gathering. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 6 for day 17.